at the heart of our life as Christians is an encounter with the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even the very term, the Word of God, for us does not, first of all, mean a book, as in the book from which we read the, the Gospel or the other sacred readings. The Word of God, most of all, means Jesus our Lord, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we have seen his glory. We experience the Lord, we encounter the Word of God, our Lord Jesus, in many different ways. We encounter the Lord in the sacred scriptures, in the sacraments, and in so many ways. But that is the heart of our life as Christians. It is the encounter with the Lord, which then impels us outward to spread the, the knowledge of the good news of salvation to the people we meet day by day in our lives. In the readings today, we, we see two different descriptions of that life-changing encounter which is at the heart of our life in Christ. For we are not people who simply understand a message or preach a particular teaching. We are people who have encountered the Lord Jesus and have been transformed by him and are sent out from him. The first reading is the most spectacular encounter with the risen Lord in the whole of history. It's one of three accounts in the Acts of the Apostles. St. Paul speaks of it in the Acts of the Apostles. Three times we hear of him describing this encounter with Jesus. So profoundly did it change his life. And it's very dramatic. There he is heading off to Damascus as a persecutor. And it's interesting that in his encounter, he, he isn't thinking of meeting Jesus. That's the last thing in his mind. And so often with us in our lives, the last thing we think of is meeting the Lord. He breaks in upon the life of Saul as he breaks in upon our lives so often when we're going the wrong way. And then he says to Saul, 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 why do you persecute me? He reminds Saul that Jesus our Lord is found in the disciples whom he is persecuting. By persecuting the church, Saul is persecuting Jesus. Jesus and the church are one. And that's a good thing for us to remember too because we encounter the Lord Jesus in this world so often through the presence in which he works amongst us in his disciples. And in fact, Saul is sent to Ananias, one of the disciples, to be brought into the fullness of faith, to be baptized, so that the light may shine in his soul and the scales may fall from his eyes. The Lord God always works through other people helping one another, in this case, Ananias helping Saul. This is the encounter with Christ. In the case of Saul, he needed this dramatic encounter. But it was one in which he recognized the presence of Jesus, and in which he was assisted by a disciple to come closer to the Lord, and then to be sent out to spread the word and to be an apostle. In the gospel today, we also hear of an encounter with Christ. And it is not very dramatic. It is what we are engaged in right now. It is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. There's no thunder and lightning, no flash of light, except there's television lights, and that's not quite the same as what Saul encountered on the road to Damascus. There's none of that. It is quiet and gentle, and yet the Lord says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life. Sometimes a person like Saul needs to be blown off his horse with a flash of light and turned around. But mostly the Lord Jesus wa works gently as he did on the road to Emmaus, leading people to him. And so he does down through time. He comes to us, our encounter with Jesus our Lord, most profoundly in the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And that's what we are engaged in right now. He speaks to us through the sacred writings. He touches our hearts through the experience of the Holy Eucharist. And as with Paul sent on his mission, he sends us on our way. So we should think of that in these Easter days. It is the encounter with Christ, not the book or the message or the teaching, but the encounter with the person of Christ that transforms our lives, as it did Saul, who became the great Apostle Paul. And as it is to do with us, 
as we experience him in word and sacrament here in the Holy Eucharist and in so many other ways in our life. And then, like Paul, to be sent out on our mission so that others may encounter Christ through us, for we are to be his messengers. Now let us join together in, in prayer. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Benedict, and for the church throughout the whole world, especially in those many places where the disciples of the Lord are facing grievous persecution. We pray to the Lord. Lord let us pray for all of the persecutors and that they may be touched as Saul was touched. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all of those who are sick and who are suffering, who are lonely and in distress. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all families, for God's blessing and strength for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray that those amongst us who are being called to serve us as religious sisters or brothers or as priests or in any form of service of the disciples, that they may respond to the call, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for all of the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers, which we offer to you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Amen. Lord God, be pleased to receive us and accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Lord God, by this holy exchange of gifts, you share with us your divine life. Grant that everything we do may be directed by the knowledge of your truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you with greater joy than ever in this Easter season when Christ became our paschal sacrifice. He is still our priest, our advocate, who always pleads our cause. Christ is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. The joy of the resurrection renews the whole world while the choirs of heaven sing forever to your glory. 